uh, I'm not going to talk really that much about ARDA. What I really want to talk about is something we can all participate in, and it's myth busting. Now, you all know what a myth is, right? It's any invented story or idea or concept, an imaginary or fictitious thing or person, and this last one is the one I think is our deal, an unproved or false collective belief that is used to justify a social institution. And by the way, beyond timeshare, this is going on in our country right now for those of you who live in the States where we can't tell what's truth and what's fact. So let's take a little bit of time today to become myth busters, okay? And um, let's talk about some of those myths. So myth number one, timeshare owners are mostly from an older generation. How many people think that's true? Well, that's because you're smart. You know it's not. The, the truth is, fact, 67% of timeshare owners are between the ages of 18 and 54. And of, for people who have purchased in the last 36 months, the average age was 47. Now, that makes sense to me. But that isn't what you'd believe if you read the media. Here's another one. Myth, timeshare owners are not highly educated. They're just a bunch of lemmings that fall for a sales practice. Isn't that a big myth out there? Well, guess what? This is the truth. 42% uh, of timeshare owners have a college degree, and 21% of all timeshare owners hold a graduate degree. Let me put that in perspective of the U.S. 2016 consensus. U.S. adults 25 years or older, 33.4% have a bachelor's degree. Well, timeshare is at 42%. And 9.3% have a, a master's degree. We're at 21%. So I would say that timeshare owners are more educated than the average American. Timeshare myths, and by the way, that's a fact. Timeshare owners believe the sales process is high pressure. I've seen the symptoms. I know what they think the timeshare uh, pre presentation is. But guess what? Fact. More than seven out of 10 recent purchasers, people who purchased in the last 36 months, 71%, found their buying experience to be excellent or good. I mean, today we sell it a much more consumer-centric way. We have iPads in the room. You can see testimonials from people that look like you. It's no longer, there is no be back. It's a relationship sale. Uh, there's samplers. There's, there's rental programs. Our whole world has changed. Now, is there a level of discomfort that goes with spending money on a dining room TV, or a dining room table, or a big TV with great sound system, or a car, or a timeshare. Sure, if I part with thousands of dollars in a few minutes, that, that certainly makes my palms a little sweaty. But it's not because of the sales process. Here's another myth. Timeshare industry myth, retirees make up the largest group of timeshare owners. Fact. Only 19% of timeshare owners are retired, as compared to 67% who hold full-time jobs or are self-employed. And this is one for a lot of my friends in the room. Most timeshare owners want to get out of their contract. If you watch TV or went on Facebook, you might think that myth is true, wouldn't you? But guess what the reality is? 70% of owners would recommend their timeshare ownership and nearly 75% would recommend their home resorts to others based on their, exp their experience. 83% of timeshare owners say that they are satisfied or extremely satisfied. And that's been consistent for more than a decade. And guess what? More than 50% of the sales are made to people who already own the product, which I think is the highest form of a compliment. Now, we do offer a use product. And if you're not using it, it comes with fees. I don't know anyone that wants to own a car if they don't drive. And they certainly don't want to buy gas and oil and licensing. So do developers need to do a better job of making sure that consumers who aren't using their product are either being educated on how to use it, or how to bank it, or how to monetize it through rental, or how to sell it on the open market, or to go through one of the developer exit programs, which virtually almost every developer has. But our industry reputation is being destroyed by third parties. Because if you stop people on the street today and said, hey, what do you know about timeshare? Guess what they'd say? It's something you want to get out of. But you talk to timeshare owners and they say, it's what changed my life. It's when I became a better spouse, a better parent, when I had better vacations, when I stopped and smelled the flowers. It's the one thing I spent money on over the years that I'm proud of. It's a use product. Its value comes from use. When the use is done, there are solutions. Now, we do have some legacy product that those solutions are tough for. And if you just bought this product you know, a year and a half ago and you have a $35,000 mortgage, you've got Something to do just like you do if you own a car that you can't afford. A contract is a contract. But we are allowing others 
to define our industry. And that's foolish. And we're certainly not going to allow others to own our customer. So, we are a society of sound bites. And this is what really concerns me. And this is beyond timeshare. You know, we need to be really thoughtful about what we forward on Facebook. I think you saw last week where we, uh, the, the FBI has, or the special prosecutor has indicted 13 Russians with bots. And I'm, I'm not being anti-Russian or anti-Trump or anti-anything. I'm just saying truth matters. And if you see something that says, you know, uh, a Trump's a racist or Hillary is a Muslim or whatever, I, I don't care what it is, just check it out before you forward it or post it. And the same thing's true about everybody's running to get out of their timeshare. We all know that people who use this product love it. And are glad, many are glad to, live it to leave it to their kids and family. There are some people that do need out. And when they do, there are options for them. And I think developers need to do a better job, and I'm proud of them. I, I look at the kind of programs that some of the developers are doing today to bust these myths and to educate owners. I listened to uh, Mike Brown, the CEO of uh, Wyndham Vacation Ownership, on their earnings call last week, where he talked about Wyndham's cares and the number of owners that are calling him. So I think, I think it's great that developers are waking up to this. And we need to be armed with the facts. And in order to bust myths, you have to have knowledge. And in order to use data well, you have to know the difference between facts and opinion. It's important to have a mission. You can disagree with a mission. You can disagree with an opinion. But you can't choose your own facts. I mean, I'm 5'3", OK? Now, if I go to some country, I don't want to say anything that sounds inappropriate, but if I go to a country where people are much shorter, I might be seen as tall, right? But I ain't tall. I'm just taller than those people. So to say I'm tall is a lie. It's a myth. Now, you could say I'm one of the most handsome, dynamic, short people you've ever met. That would be a truth. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. My twins. You're tall when you stand next to me. But let's talk about what research and sentiment, and by the way, they are both very important. And I compliment the Matamos that have done great sentiment. Uh, through uh, their programs. I know the NTOA uses it. Uh, ARTA has the Hark Report. You know, that's about how people are feeling about something in a moment in time, what the chatter is out there. That's very valuable data. But it is different than research. When I hire PricewaterhouseCoopers uh, or if I hire, um, I guess it's PwC today, or Deloitte and Touche to do our financial performance and they do a survey of you know, 100 developers, and they beta test it, and market it, and they benchmark it, and they do quantifi quantifying research, that's fact. And we have to know the difference. So how people feel isn't fact, it's sentiment. It can be truthful, but so we need to be really careful. We kind of, it's, like, it's a little bit like quoting the Bible. You know, people like to pick and choose which ones they want to quote from, right? You know, so um, help me help the industry by being truth tellers, by making sure that we know what we're saying, where we're saying, that we'll say, wait, wait, this is sentiment, this is fact, this is opinion. We're all allowed to have our opinions, but we can't have our own set of facts. And I'm gonna bust a myth about Arda. How many people think Arda's anti-resales? Oh, come on. Well, good, because we're not. How in the world could you sell perpetuity and not believe in taking an opportunity for people to recycle that product. Um, well, how many people think that, you know, that Arda doesn't care about whether a timeshare owner wants out or not? Because we do. We have a whole staff of people that man phones and manage online, a portal that we have for consumers, connecting them back to their developer, helping them solve problems. In fact, Arda's three separate organizations. I wanted to, they're all not-for-profits. Um, they're all uh, live in the sunlight. Our minutes are available. There's no secret. Art is a 501c6 trade association representing the interests of developers of the product and the HOAs. That's the Art of Convention. That's our lobbying and legislative world. Then there's Art of Rock, which is a 501c4. It's a consumer group advocating to protect the integrity of the vacation real estate product that person purchased. And we work very closely with many consumer groups passing non-judicial foreclosure to make it easier for an HOA to recycle inventory that has been defaulted on. 
<clears throat> or we work closely to make sure that a consumer who owns a timeshare isn't charged a bed tax, a transient occupancy tax that a rental charges. You shouldn't be charged an occupancy tax for staying in your own unit. We win every single time. We fight to make sure that the uh, taxes on the actual resort are fair market value for a condo, not based on total sales, which include sales and marketing and club infrastructure and employees, etc. And we win every time on that. And I am so proud that we have 1.8 million, that's 1,800,000 individual consumers that voluntarily choose to write us a check for three, five, or ten dollars a year to protect the integrity of their real estate purchase. And Art of Rock is about a $6 million organization. Art is about an $8 million organization. And then the AIF, which is our uh, 501c3, it's a global uh, research organization. We do the worldwide study, financial performance, who our consumers are, why they buy. We also do market intelligence, focus groups. You know, it's so interesting. We did a lot of learning from focus groups. I mean, Toyota, I, you were wowing today, by the way. And I just have to say, I, I read, because I've been curious about touching millennials, where Toyota saw that the average person who owned their cars was like 53, 54 years old. And so they made a, a cognitive decision through focus group work to create Sion which is that cute little boxy car and you can get your own racing stripe and your own hubcaps and you can pick your own sound system and they do concerts at their ev events, at their dealerships. The average age I think of a Sion is like a 34 year old. So yeah, again, they, they were smart and maybe we as an industry need to create new products for millennials because guess what? Every millennial I know, and I, by the way, I'm a closet millennial. I'm just an old one. But I like to get up on this and decide where I'm going to go this weekend. And I don't know that I want to be locked in. Maybe I want to buy five years of vacations or a sampler product or ten. Or you know what else? I've learned that a 53-year-old with a three-year-old looks a lot like a 23-year-old with a three-year-old. Lifestyle trumps generation. So it's not either or, but we need to serve everyone. Just like we need to be sending billing out in the paper for our older owners who are not trusting of the internet, but we also need to allow people to use debit cards and do email transactions. And probably 15 years from now, maybe faster, we won't be doing much paper. It may be something you have to ask for as a special thing because that's how our world is changing. But as we cross that bridge, we have to serve everyone. And um, I'm proud of Arda. We're not perfect. By the way, you're ARDA too. How many of you are ARDA members? You're ARDA. I'm, I'm just a hired hack. And the reality is we are what you want us to be. You know, people, what does ARDA think about that? Well, I don't know. What do you think? Because we're a collective. And guess what? Sometimes we don't even agree. Sometimes we can't reach consensus. Um, we just had a big think tank about exit. And it was very interesting. Um, and there was consensus around a lot of it, but there were some that there wasn't consensus around, and I'm glad to share that with anyone. Again, we live in sunlight. We're not trying to put anyone out of business. Uh, every business model should go do what they want to do. But I am not going to sit by and allow my industry to be maligned. This is a great product that improves people's family life, and if you own it, there are solutions for you if you don't want to own it. And the last thing you need to do is invite a third party in who's going to make it expensive and acrimonious because the only person who's going to get rich on that are lawyers. And any piece of inventory, whether it's through a travel club or through a trade-in or through a resale, if it doesn't go into the hands of a dues-paying member, I'm coming to get you. We're working with every official, and I'm proud of our friends at the NTOA, they do the same. We are not going to allow our industry to be interrupted by those who just want to make a fast buck on a confused marketplace. Now, that doesn't mean we need, don't need to do a better job of understanding that marketplace. So, understand before you endorse, research versus sentiment, myth versus, versus fact, truth versus lie. Join me, please. Let's be truth tellers. Thank you.